Welcome to the streets of Azerbaijan here at the Baku City Circuit for round four of the 2018 Formula One season. The second practice session saw both Haas cars get a 1 2 in their race runs, although it's difficult to believe that that will actually transpire in the race. G1 saw Fernando Alonso out with no time set. Both Toro Rossos failed to make Q2 with Lance Stroll along with a second McLaren. Due to the wet conditions in Q2, the rain caught out many a big driver. Both Renaults were out, with Hülkenberg being the slowest to set a lap time. Bottas and Hamilton didn't make the cut, with Dixon ahead of both Mercs. What with all the drama of Mercedes not making Q3, both Salvas and Sergei Sorokin made it into Q3 for the first time this season. Of course, for Leclerc and Sorokin, the first time in their careers. Romain Grosjean qualified 7th, but an MGUH penalty sets him back to 17th. Ricardo and Verstappen line up on row 3 of the grid. Esteban Ocon qualified just outside the top 3 behind Kimi Raikkonen. And it was Sergio Perez who was the star of qualifying, making it onto P2 on the grid with Sebastian Vettel ahead of him in pole position. Time to see how the race will unfold. I'll hand you down to Chris for the race. What is up guys, we are back for the next episode in this career mode around the streets of Baku, which is kind of weird because usually it's just after Canada, but obviously they moved it forward um, for whatever reason um, and moving the Russian Grand Prix a little bit further back. We're not doing too bad, we're in P11 to start off uh, the race for the Grand, Grand Prix, so a bit of an iffy qualifying and um, the weather caught us out amongst obviously the Mercedes. Hamilton is behind us and obviously Carlos Sainz made it into the top 10 uh, thanks to that but it's a bit of a weird grid we've got Sergio Perez in P2 and it's gonna be interesting to see how the Force Indias can get off the line as we wait for the five lights to come on we've got Vettel on the left Perez on the right hand side the lights are out and it's a slow start from the Force Indias Raikkonen is already side by side and he is clear of both of the Force Indias the Force Indias are gonna to touch coming into turn one so it's already a bit of a bit of a miss and a match for both of the four Indians, we've got a Red Bull going up to the inside of Marcus Ericsson. And you've got um, Sergei Sorokin having a look at the Sauber of Charles Leclerc. And we're going to try and make positions um, up as best we can in the early phase with all these cars going really slow. We're going to have a look at Charles Leclerc coming in to this 90 degree left hander. And we're going to get the move done on the Monegasque driver. So up another position. We're up a few more places um, than we were at the beginning. We're going to look at the start of Kimi Raikkonen. We wait for the lights to go off. And you can see Raikkonen and Vettel just fly off. Raikkonen initially got a um, bit of a better start than Vettel as well. But uh, obviously the run down to turn one is very short indeed. We've got the two Red Bulls looking at having a little bit of a battle. We're going to keep our nose in this and just see what happens if they hold each other up. We're going to try and take as full advantage as we can. But Ricardo and Verstappen um, obviously having a little bit of a tussle. Ricardo putting into the back of um, into the dirty air. But Ricardo is on the soft tyres and Verstappen... Both Red Bulls in the soft, as we take advantage, we're on the super softs. So we're going to be coming in a little bit earlier than the Red Bulls. There is the race leader at the moment, Sebastian Vettel, out in front. And he's pulling a bit of a gap. Raikkonen isn't doing a fantastic job. And at the moment, both Saubers are in the points, which is amazing for both um, of the drivers. Especially uh, Shoulder Club hasn't got, any, hasn't got any points. So it's going to be a bit hit and miss. For those drivers, you can see we're going to try and make a move on Max Verstappen down the um, start finish straight, and that's going to be job done on Verstappen. So we're moving up as best we can. We've got the Force Indias next, which is going to be a bit tentative. But a little bit further down the grid, we have got the Mercedes and Carlos Sainz having a bit of a battle. There is, uh, I believe that's uh, Sergei Sorokin um, losing a bit of ground to the other drivers. Bottas not getting the job done on his teammate, but Hamilton is going to come steaming through. Um, and go side by side with Bottas so the Mercedes are having a little bit of an inter-team battle you've got Mercedes going at it, you've got Red Bull and you've got Force India uh, Ferrari not quite doing it because Raikkonen is having an appalling race as per the usual but they're going to go side by side into the left hander and Hamilton is going to absolutely bully his teammate out of room and out of road we were speaking of the Force India a second ago and here they go again into turn one side by side this is going to allow us plenty of time to catch up to both of them this is where they crashed Last year in 2017, and they luckily didn't actually make contact going into that wall. But look how much time we have gained because of this. We're going to pull to the right-hand side. We're going to go three wide into this left-hander. This is not going to be good. The four cities make contact. They go into us. We hit the wall, and we have damage. So we're going to lose uh, quite a bit of a chunk of time as we actually go deep and um, somewhat run the four cities out of road. But it's out of pure frustration um, what happened there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you saw what happened there. I'm going to need some front wing, guys. I'm going to need a new front wing. So there is the team radio 
um, obviously what happened during the time. It's really frustrating because obviously the person, the one that was that lost the most is obviously ourselves. We had no nowhere to go. It's probably a bit um, a bit risky going around the outside with them too. But um, it's just frustrating. Lewis Hamilton is making gains. We come into the pit lane a little bit later on. We've got to uh, repair the damage that we had uh, to our front wing, which is obviously a bit frustrating. But it's racing. It's racing instantly. You can't really do much. Perez is to blame. But there is our teammate coming in, and he's actually had to stack because of our front wing. So Grosjean's going to lose a massive chunk of time uh, in the pit stop phase. He's not going to get any points by the looks of it, which is disappointing for our teammate. But um, what can you do? They have to serve as the faster car. Kimi Raikkonen is currently leading the race as it stands. So it's not too bad. We're getting, getting, getting some um, job done. We're going to come out. And you can see we just about get ahead of Ocon. But Hamilton actually jumped us. We didn't get past him. He got back past us in the pit stop phase. Obviously, the Force India also had to change its front wing. But that's Fernando Alonso with an engine blowout. And that's another McLaren retirement. That's not good for McLaren, to say the least. It's just so frustrating. He was having an okay race, I would say. It wasn't amazing. But um, we are one car down so far this race. And Lewis Hamilton's having a look at the, the Sauber of Marcus Ericsson. And there's a VSC out at the moment because of the Alonso thing. But we've gone green and we are underway. And Hamilton can't quite get the move done. But we're going to have a move in the background on Carlos Sainz as it goes green. Maybe he was napping just a little bit. And we managed to take full advantage. Daniel Ricciardo is going to come into the pit. From the lead of the race, so Ricardo obviously doing a fantastic job on them soft tyres. Ricardo is in contention for a podium, um, as well as Max Verstappen. I think the opportunity is gone unless we push like crazy coming through the rest of the slide. We've got Bottas. Oh, that was incredibly close. Bottas almost taking out his teammate and um, the Sauber at the same time. We'll have a look here, and Bottas just swipes across Hamilton, and I believe Hamilton's got some damage from that. It might have been from Bottas. That gets us through, but that was incredibly dangerous. We've got battle against Raikkonen now. Raikkonen is falling down the field. I'm not sure why, if he's got any damage or anything like that, but um, Raikkonen loses out to us, and uh, we're going to come through and just hold off the position as best we can. There we go, we go past. You can see Verstappen doesn't come out ahead of us, so we absolutely push like crazy to get past there. And you can see at this point in time, the Sauber's actually ahead of Raikkonen. Is also, it's Lewis Hamilton, so Kimi is falling off massively. He's in the clutches of the Renault, which I believe is Carlos Sainz. Yes, it is indeed. Carlos Sainz gets past Raikkonen. So Raikkonen is just tumbling down the order at this point of the Grand Prix. And it's absolutely disappointing considering Sebastian Vettel was out in front by an unholy um, gap. He is absolutely out there on his own, leading his own race. Lewis Hamilton not having a fantastic Grand Prix, but poor qualifying and his race isn't exactly gone to plan. He moves up past Marcus Ericsson. One more position the uh, current world champion does. It's a bit of a weird, a uh, bit of a weird race to say the least. We've got Esteban Ocon at also looking at Kimi. That is uh, Stoffel Van Dorn's got past Kimi as well, and now there's another little train behind Kimi. Sergio Perez looks to have a go um, at Raikkonen. Gasly isn't too far away either, so it's just gone from bad to worse for um, Kimi, just to say the least. Kimi is just no pace, no pace whatsoever. We've got Pierre Gasly battling with Sergio Perez. Perez does hold off Pierre Gasly at the point in time, but not bad at all not bad at all we've got Marcus Ericsson now under pressure from uh, Carlos Sainz so Carlos Sainz is having a pretty good Grand Prix to be fair and there's a yellow flag out um, because Brendan Hartley behind Kimi and Perez has got past Kimi as well awful awful engine failure that's probably one of the biggest ones we've had so far this season but not too bad in the end now Gasly's trying to make a move on Kimi Raikkonen and here comes the Toro Rosso of Carlos Sainz Carlos Sainz has got to go almost three wide Gasly locks up, but that's not going to stop him or Sainz getting past Raikkonen. Raikkonen is in the middle of nowhere. We're coming on to the final lap now, and you can see we've got Verstappen right up our gearbox. Verstappen is looking incredibly punchy on them super soft tyres. We're going to have to go defensive for this long DRS straight. We go really wide into the left-hander. It's going to be difficult because Hamilton also is going to have DRS. It's going to be a double slipstream. Um, for Lewis Hamilton, Carlos Sainz in the background, a little bit too far to be able to catch up to us. But we're going to do what we can to defend. We're going to go all the way to the inside. Verstappen's going to try and make it work all the way around the outside. He now has the inside for the next right hand. We're going to have to go the long way around and try and hold him off. We manage to go side by side. Verstappen gets a little bit squirmy on the exit. We're going to have the inside for the left hander. It's almost three wide as we come into this 
little chicane type area, but we managed to hold off Verstappen. Hamilton backs out of her, which thank God, otherwise that could have been very nasty. But we've gone side by side all throughout this entire lap, more or less, and we're coming up to the castle section. So this could be make or break for us. It's going to end in tears. If we go side by side, there's contact with Verstappen and the wall ourselves and Verstappen. So there's damage to Verstappen's front wing. There goes a piece of RM play. So... All in all, it was a 50-50 challenge and both of us came off with damage, but Verstappen has gotten ahead and we go incredibly wide through this fast left-hander. We just have no pace um, or grip for that matter um, going around these corners. So Verstappen looks to be pretty handy uh, coming through these corners. It's going to be difficult to hold off Hamilton, Science, Alonso and I believe that's Perez and the Eric Salbot of Ericsson. It's all in a massive train. And um, Verstappen's got a little bit of a gap. Look at that train. We've got the, both Force Indians, Toro Rosso, both Renaults. It's going to be crazy. Lewis Hamilton, we get a little bit of a tank slap on the end. We're going to try and break the slipstream, but it's just not going to work. We're going to have to pray for ourselves that we can actually make a gap here on board of Ocon. Who's looking at Marcus Ericsson, who could take away another position? We've got Fernando Alonso just ahead of Stoffel Van Dorn. He's going to lose a position, and Ocon takes two places um, coming down that little, little chaotic moment. But it was absolutely crazy how many cars... Jesus, how many cars were that close within each other? All because of the incident between ourselves and Verstappen. But Sebastian Vettel absolutely just dominated that Grand Prix from lights to flag. He was just out. He was gone. So um, he did a fantastic job, obviously, for the Scuderia team. Can't be more happy. Um, there, there we are. We managed to get a P4. Not too bad. Not too bad with our nice helmet change we had since the Monaco Grand Prix. But it was a one two and three for Red Bull drivers per se. Obviously Vettel, not a Red Bull driver no more, but two, three, four Red Bull, not too bad at all. And um, Max and Ricardo on the podium once again. Um, same podium as Australia, I believe. So it's quite, quite interesting. But the next race is going to be an interesting one. We go to Spain, well, obviously the pre-season, see if that has any effect and see if the grid is anything like that. It'll be difficult for sure, but I'll see you then, guys. Till then, bye-bye. Once again, Baku didn't disappoint. Filled with inter-team battles and Force India once again came together more than twice, though this time it ruined another driver's race in the form of rookie Chris Dixon. Force India was certainly on for a podium, but the contact between the two drivers allowed a Red Bull 2-3 and Sauber got their first points of the season, which promotes them clear of Williams in the Constructors' Championship. Time to turn our heads to the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia, Probably the most familiar track with the teams, as of course they were doing pre-season runs there. Will the pre-season running play a huge part? Only time will tell. I've been Nick Allflat. I'll see you then.